Good evening, Amok. And uh, we're going to do some more PI. Uh, this will be part three of the PI Masterclass. Um, in part one, we looked over doing the uh, concepts and building of uh, a RAW to a Tier 1 or P1 uh, planetary interaction factory for high yield production. And that went very well, as, as well as could be expected. Now in part two, well, we covered managing that factory, managing, emptying it, how hard it is to, to maintain um, the uh, extractor head cycles with two day or 49 and a half hour uh, cycles and resetting those and what you can expect. In, in this um, part three of the guides uh, of the series, we're gonna look at doing uh, planetary interaction uh, tier 2 and tier 3 and what this involves really is uh, creating a, a character specifically to run just factories for processing that uh, the tier 1 or P1 materials that you harvest off planets and uh, typically you'll have quite a lot more of those characters dedicated towards doing P1 uh, enough, generally two of each type for whichever types of factories you're going to run. So here's here's an example of this character that I use uh, that makes guidance systems, which is a tier three product. And I've maintained these already today by refilling them uh, to just give an example of what, what we could expect and, and what needs to be accomplished uh, to make a high yield uh, planetary interaction processor character for processing tier two or uh, or P2 products and then creating P3 out of that product or two of those products. And uh, the, the P1 uh, naturally should obviously already have um, a good stockpile of about 100,000 uh, of each type of material. Uh, so that you're, you know, ahead of your requirements for materials. So, um, the, the P1 factory uh, generally will, you know, make enough with two characters per, per type of material you require. And uh, to be able to uh, fill one of these and keep your a buffer of materials... Uh, you know, ahead of what you'll need to keep one of these running. And then, you know, you may have some excess that you can trade or sell to, you know, other corp mates. Uh, so I've got uh, two characters that are processing, and one of them is making three types of P2 materials, and another one is making that character, two characters with six planets. Really, really, you need six planets to make doing uh, tier three or two sets of tier three uh, processor factories uh, in, of the high yield variety uh, ideal so that you have uh, consistently you have two types of these factories. Let's say that this one and, and this one would be making uh, P2 products or tier two products which when in there, there and after uh, feed your third factory out of, out of the, the set. So with six planets, you can have two, two sets, right? You'll have uh, four planets with this type of setup making uh, tier two products from the P1 you harvest with the high yield P1 factory. And, uh, you know, in turn, you feed that into your uh, tier three factory. So these two that I've shown so far, they're they're making uh, tier two products from from tier one, and then the third one on this one, as I mentioned, is making uh, guidance systems. So that's transmitters and water cooled CPUs to make guidance systems, and uh, uh, usually with with tier two. Uh, running one of these factories a full run as long as you you maintain it well 
should make 6,250 exactly of the tier 2 resource that you need of each type uh, to be able to um, you know fully fill one of these uh, to you know adequate capacity to make make a full run of your tier 3 product in this case guidance systems um, now you might be looking at this and saying like jeez man that's like some autism you got there and I would completely agree because this is uh, quite quite an involved pain in the ass to set up but it's certainly manageable because of the way that it's set up and uh, setting this up on on a planet um, requires some forethought about how you're going to do that and which planets you're going to do it on uh, because the the amount of links that are between all of these structures um, they use a lot a lot of uh, fitting resources as you can see the power usage on this is 98 and a half percent and the CPU usage is 90 90 almost 91 percent um, and it is you know fully upgraded to level 6 so this character has command center upgrades level 5 oops we're all on planet management yeah has command center upgrades level 5 to run the factory with maximum upgrades and for six planets you need interplanetary consolidation level 5 and that that's the the best case scenario you can have for a planetary interaction character that just processes your incoming resources from your uh, high yield tier 1 processors so you, you know you gather everything up into a central location set this up in a convenient place and it, it's typically good if you can to set up uh, two sets in the same uh, system and that's not always possible because of uh, planetary interaction uh, customs office taxes as well as um, the radius of the planets and the availability of planets in, in one system and the second is more of a crucial um, requirement about radius of the planets so you can see like I've got these this set of, of two p2 processors and one p3 processor are all set up on three barren planets and there's a reason for that and the reason being is because barren planets typically have a very low radius so like the radius of this planet is only you know just shy of 3100 kilometers and that is required to have a very it's required to have a very low radius for a factory like this to be able to fit on the planet and not exceed the available amount of uh, power grid required because you know there is a lot of links on this factory however none of the links are upgraded there's not a single upgraded link uh, between any of the structures and storages or any processors in any storages or any of the processors and, and an adjacent processor they're all basic links but it still uses you know almost all of the power available at maximum skills and maximum upgrades so I'm, I'm hoping that the three that I'm going to build will fit because I've already used the three best case scenario planets in this system uh, to be able to build three of these the first one you know is 3070 kilometer radius the next one is A 3,690 kilometer radius and you can see that this one here as I switch over to this one right same factory design but it's using 90 98.13 percent and you know it, that's that's pretty close to the maximum and there's a variance about what you can expect depending on your um, attention to detail and your tolerance for being very patient with setting this up because the placement will dictate how um, far away the structures are from each other by a matter of pixels right and pixels are like kilometers with this in in a sense of scale because here's here's a link that is it doesn't say how many kilometers maybe it does Yeah, 
It doesn't say. But anyways, you get the idea. Shorter is always better. Doesn't matter if you're doing P1, P2, P3, P4. Um, shorter links will give you more availability for processor storage and so on. And uh, just for the sake of looking at this, here's the P3 processor doing doing its thing. And uh, you might be looking at, at the P3 design and saying, well, why do you have all these extra storages? Well, having a similar design is really beneficial in that, um, yeah, sure, I might not be using this storage. However, if I want to repurpose this factory at any time to do a P3 resource, I can just switch the, uh, the type of um, material it's processing and, you know, have it do that. Um, but, uh, you know, again, too, like as the, uh, you get towards the higher tiers, say like P3, P4, the, uh, the amount of material and the volume that it, uh, it consumes in, in storage space increases, um, quite a bit, right? So you'll have, you know, for example, um, the maximum amount of a P2 resource that one of these launch pads can fit is 6,666 exactly right now the p2 processor right after it's done a, a whole run with uh each one of these resources um you know here's each each one of these these resource um providers that's the word i was looking for well we'll have um 50,000 units total divided between them, right? So when I fill this, what I do is usually uh, always ensure that the first launch pad that I fill will be the one on the lower left corner. So when I'm, I'm landing on the Planetary Customs Office, I have my uh, two pairs of resources of 50,000 units each in each available to, uh, you know, uh, input into the customs office to transfer. So first I'll transfer into this one, I'll fill it right full, and uh, it's gonna empty some of the, the available resource, or these processors all will. So make sure it's right full, and then do, you know, an expedited transfer to the center one, which I've already done uh, fairly recently. And then I, I refill this one again. So, that there's there's some consistency in design here that makes uh, filling these up easy. So always make sure that the the lower left um, launch pad right resource uh, also matches what is provided by the uh, the center you know storage facility. But Zart, why did you use a storage facility? Well. It's uh, it's really just about the the CPU usage, I think, right? Because launch pads use more CPU, so there there does need to be a balance, right? There's there's no way that this would fit with um, what four, five, like six launch pads, right? You can get three launch pads, which is good, and. Uh, the concept behind doing this with P2 is that you have uh, a launch pad that you can fill and expedited transfer to fill the center one and fill again. So that's one, that's 50,000 units of your first resource. We'll provide, um, you know, all of these with two roots, all of these processors, the advanced processors with two roots each. So when you're setting this up, you have to make a root for um this this resource of water to each each one of these processors individually and then go back over it again after you, you've set it up and filled it and i'll show you this later uh to again you know have this um storage facility provide an input resource for each one of these processors and uh, the same can be said for this one right so the, um, the resource here for reactive metals from this launch pad has to be provided 
for each one of these processors and same with this one. Now the top two structures, uh, top two storage structures provide a dual role. Um, actually, well the top launch pad only provides, is the one that only provides a dual role. The top storage is purely just for storage because if with um, the available amount of storage here, um, despite having this this storage facility, you know, available that's not full. Um, if the way the way that I've set this up with the export routes or processed routes uh, from all of the processors is that um, the export routes are split, so they're just finished finished uh, an hour's worth of processing. And what I mean by split is that because of their, the, the rule of thumb with planetary interaction design of having a maximum of five logistical hops or five logistical routes between processors and storages, um, the, um, the export routes have to be split because this is an export storage. So for example, all of these bottom storages uh, they cannot export into this top storage. They have to export into this launch pad because this storage facility exceeds the available or, or the maximum amount of logistical routes. So what I, what I typically do is up until they get to all, all of these two, four, six, I do two, four, six, and then these middle two will all export into that top storage facility. The, the process material will uh, go into those. Will be, will be routed to those because that, that reaches. From here, it's one, two, three, four, five, right? But because of how these these ones on the edge are routed, um, even even though that this one here uh, on the edge is linked through here and then to the center storage, this one I, I don't know I did it a little differently, but it doesn't really matter anyways, right? So one two, one two, three four, five six. So these two on the edge in the center they won't reach the top so they have to go to the top launch pad right now but zart oh but you could export everything into the center storage well that's great but exporting into center into storage facilities instead of customs offices limits your utility value or utility ability um, i can't export anything that i i put into here uh, into the uh, customs office if I have an overfilling problem or you know if the uh, if if this storage isn't being emptied by these processors because there's no way to set a priority for how these are emptied or for how these processors empty the storages it's typically something where I have to fill it and then check on it within 8 to 12 hours 12 is usually the, the, the most you want to let it go um, and the reason being behind that is that you want to keep an eye on this top launch pad because it is a dual role and uh, you know um, to make sure that uh, this is being emptied or has been emptied to a certain degree because it will fill and again too if you overfill your, your export uh, product storage then any processed product will be destroyed if it's overfilled. And uh, what I usually do is in 8 to 12 hours or tomorrow morning from now, I'll log in, I'll check. And if um, there's any free available storage space in this bottom right launch pad, because, you know, some of this reactive metal will be consumed. What I typically do is I will um, do an expedited transfer to this other launch pad. To free up space in this top dual roll launch pad that's providing input and output storage just to free up enough room 
to allow it to process. And again, this, this runs uh, fully filled with 50,000 units of each resource for approximately two days. Um, the P3 processor design with uh, 6,250 units of each resource runs for approximately 24 hours. And it will process about 2,000 units of P3, depending on, you know, if you have actually like a full um, batch of, you know, 6,250 units of each P2 resource. And if, if you can keep this going, just chugging along here, processing this, it can do some pretty amazing, amazing amounts of, uh, you know, ESC. Like one of these, one of, if, if it was even possible to run um, six of these factories on one character and feed them all, uh, you could do, you know, the robotics alone value of one of these processed uh, in two days, or in one day is about 200 million S for one factory. So six times 200, you know, that's per day. It can do probably about about 1.1 billion a day if you can feed this, all, all of the P2 you could ever get your hands on. And it would do that all in a day, and like 1.1 billion. But, you know, the because uh, the P2 resource uh, processing takes two days, you know, there's um, going to be a day, 50% of the time, the P3 processor will sit idle. And, you know, that's just the nature of things. It takes a while to get the lower tier resources available and processed. And that's, you know, the concept behind doing high, high yield P PI is that removing as many of the bottlenecks as you can with uh, providing lower tier resources or processing those lower tier resources will keep your higher tier processors and processing facilities uh, running more frequently and processing higher amounts when they do more consistently. And you know that a lot of people are curious about why you would do the design that you know the the high yield P1 factory does or or you know entails or provides. And, and a lot of this is why, because of this runs for two days, the P3 processor with the same amount of processors um, runs for one day, P4, I don't know, I've never really done P4 often enough to be uh, um, terribly interested or, you know, or really, really make a note of that, or it's been quite a long time. Doing, doing this with like two or six P3 factories is, is, is quite enough by itself to get a very high volume of materials. So that's, that's sort of the concept and the idea behind what we're going to do. Now, now onto the actual doing it. Um, now, as far as picking planets, again, to the, the radius matters, uh, because, you know, we have a good bunch of planets in the system. However, I've used the three available barren planets. A gas planet for this is definitely not going to work. Um, lava planet for this may work, but it may be really annoying to do. Um, tempered planets, you know, again, like you can use a tempered planet, I think. I hope so. I'm pretty sure you can. So processors, yeah. So you can do P4 on, on a tempered planet. The tempered planets that have um, really, really cloud covered surfaces can be quite annoying to do uh, processor factories on because it's really hard to see your factory and and design and, and set it up and maintain it later. Um, but as long as you have the ability to find a, a, low, a low radius planet, um, and there are there are several of them, um, like eight thousand three hundred. That might be pushing it. So I'm going to try and avoid Planet Three. Um, I know that the Oceanic Planet in this one was one of them. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set up two P2 factories and then the P3 factory. And uh, the goal behind setting up these three this set of factories is to design, to process vaccines. Uh, we're going to make vaccines for 
which which resource was it? Viral agent, vaccines. All right, so we're going to do uh, two P2 factories. One will be making livestock, one will be making viral agent, and the P3 factory will be making vaccines. Now, it's, that's the schematic design. Um, vaccines in turn are used to make sterile conduits, which, you know, I. I don't have the resources to make the smart fab units uh, because that requires construction blocks and miniature electronics. So construction blocks, reactive and toxic metals, but I'm using these resources that I'm harvesting for other products on other factories. So there's some balance there that's needed. And miniature electronics, that's you know, chiral structures, I'm using that to make my robotics and silicon, which I'm not harvesting at all because you can only get that on lava planets uh, by, you know, harvesting felsic magma. So, you know, again, too, I don't do P4 because, you know, I can get uh, 2,000 units of each type of P3 resource out of a P3 factory every two days, which is, you know, that's four... 600 million a week on best case scenario per per p3 processor so still i make you know 1.2 billion a week typically with uh with two sets of these uh p2 p3 um schematic designs running if, if i can keep up with my p1 resources and that's always the thing a lot of people don't use that high yield design and when you bottleneck on your P1 resources, um, whatever they happen to be, you will not keep up with being able to feed your P2 factories and, and so on. So um, the, uh, the planets that are available in this system are, well, we'll just look at Eve planets for a sec. And uh, careful if you use this website because you should be using should be using an ad blocker. There, there's some nasty stuff on this website, and uh, I'm also using uh, script safe, so it blocks nasty nasty stuff. But anyways, you can see that this this lists the radiuses. So I'm using the three barren planets for my uh, guidance systems processing. So that's three thousand. 3600 and I guess the last barren planet was 5660 so it actually will fit on a planet that is 6000 kilometers or less which means that it'll work because I'm going to use the oceanic planet that's less than 3000 and then I've got a temperate planet at planet 7 that's 4500 kilometers so that's two of them. And this one will be probably the last one that I think might work. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, 7,470 might be pushing my luck as far as getting that whole factory to fit. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to build the the P2 factory on the oceanic planet, which will be the easy one to build first. And because uh, that one absolutely will fit. So when, when we're doing this, again, to we, we've got to have our our three command centers in our uh, industrial ship or, or cargo ship and we need to be undocked to start building this so we're going to exit out of the planetary view just for a moment and let's undock and we'll just sit on the uh, the undock of the portazar it's pretty quiet out here it's getting late everybody's going to sleep Shh, don't wake them up lazy parts we'll just stop here make sure we're good and tethered
Make sure we're getting tethered. Ah, uh, come on, there's, there's my tether. Okay, I'm tethered. So I can't be attacked, I'm safe. Good. Now, since we've got our oceanic, yep, there. Okay, we'll pick the oceanic planet again. Now, when doing these, it doesn't really matter where on the planet you set it up. It's just easier to do it right at the spot where the planet, planetary view opens. Because you'll always go back to that spot when you manage it again. You won't have to wait for it to scroll all the way around the planet to the ass inside, right? You just, like, you know, wherever wherever it opens, that's where you want it to be, right? So I'll we'll just scroll in a bit and go up. Go to our command center. And we want to drop the command center, I don't know, maybe perhaps a little bit above where we're going to build the factory. And uh, <clears> then <throat> we're going to upgrade it all the way. Now, building one of these factories is, is definitely in, in the neighborhood of about maybe 10 to 20 million a pop. So they're, they're not something you want to build twice if you can avoid it. And they take probably you know 15 to 15 minutes to half an hour a piece to set up so there we go now now on with the fun uh we we have a working model here and uh really starting to build this uh, this one i i kind of went a little bit off level with with building the center you just kind of start from the center and work your way out right you're gonna build build a level center and then make the octagon and then just add to it All right build the octagon add your launch pads build around the launch pads add to the sides add the top structure build all the links so that's uh, that's the way that this is done so we'll, we'll go back to our oceanic planet again and we are going to start with the storage facility that's the center of the structure so we want to leave enough room between the center and the top to avoid having the top uh, storage structure um, contact the command center because that does not need to be connected at all. all right so we're going to use the bottom of the screen sort of as a guide here get in there just to be able to see it doing this definitely is uh, one of the more autistic things that anybody could do in Eve and then we'll do two processors so we're going to do advanced and try and make it level and as close together as possible and really the core of this dictates how well the rest of your factory will come together as far as the distance between the structures with the links and that's one of the important things of this is you've seen that there so that's, that's not too bad, right? So we can, we can just like kind of link these together and then we're going to add two and then two in the bottom. And then we get our, our core for the, uh, the P2, P3 factory design. So advanced, right? Try and just find the good spot there and we'll bring it up. And again, same, same sort of idea. right there that's pretty good I've got a, a pretty high precision razor mouse for doing this as well gaming mouse which does help if you've got uh, an old crappy ball mouse then you might want to reconsider your life choices before doing this there so there's our core all right we're gonna go and link all of these together basically in a cauliflower design, I guess, if you call that. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to add the three launch pads. Um, spaceports, Oceanic, and... Oops. Right there, one launch pad there. We're going to add one there. 
and one there. And it's a little off level, but hey, it's not perfect, but it's the best it's going to get. I think I can probably move this one down and a little bit closer in so that it starts to correct it itself a little bit. So with, with the links, the sides that you're going to link being closer together are, are typically more important. Right, like this is a little closer together than these two because I'm just going to do this. Right, and one link here. Right, so if if this processor needs to export to this launch pad, it will export it through this storage, through this processor, and into this launch pad. Now, more processors. There's a total of about 21 processors in this build. And I'm just going to pull up a picture on my web browser for reference because despite the amount of times I've done this, it uh, it's always a pain in the ass to remember exactly where all of those processors go. Come on, imager, load. Imager, load. Come on, imager. Imager slow tonight. Okay. So this is the bottom row. Right. That's what I was looking for. So the bottom row has five processors. this one to here and these go to this spaceport this one to this spaceport this to this spaceport right so we have a consistent route from the center and a consistent route from the edges to the upper spaceport. So one, two, three, four, five is the maximum, right? And it wouldn't change even if we change where these were linked to the bottom. It's just that none of these bottom processors can be more than five hops away from the spaceport that they're going to export into because of the rule of five. Now, what we have to do is start building up the sides. So we add one more processor to the outside of each of the bottom spaceports. And getting these ones kind of level is a little more important because they will affect the how square this build is. Having it kind of squares good there right so they're not not perfect but yeah i guess it's good enough we're kind of rushing this one so there we go and now after that we have one two three we've got four more on each side get a little closer to the bottom that 
that's about as good as it's going to get. So these ones we we can link them up here so they're closer to the center. And this one to here so that that's one, two, three, four after. And then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's the maximum for these. But it's good to have everything routed through the center as well. So that you have the a sort of a center interconnecting route. Because you know you don't have to link every every processor to every other structure. Um, now the top spaceport has one processor on each side of it. And it does help that I'm trying to do this on a, on a 1080p monitor instead of a 4K resolution monitor or 1440p because everything isn't any smaller than it already is. I'm going to redo that one. Again, too, you can always use the bottom of your screen as a guide to keep it level. Keeping it level will, you know, in some ways help it help your uh, your setup be square. Like if you build build a house, you don't build it square. Nothing nothing's going to line up. Your doors won't shut, and and all kinds of funny uh, things will happen from having a uh, a bad design or uh, a contractor that didn't know what the hell he was doing. So now we got to add two more processors on top, and then we add the top storage. And that's that's it for all the structures being added and linked. Right. And you'll know if you got it square when you go and do this part, when it when it looks like a triangle. Which. That one was a little, oops, that's a little bit too close to the center. That was the wrong spot again. <sighs> the edges of these are, are tough to get in the right place sometimes. Where they're like a, oh, almost had it, that was... That's pretty good, I think. See, now this one doesn't want to come in closer to here, so. Trying to keep these links short is, is sometimes a challenge. But this, this planet has an extremely small radius, so it's not as much of an issue, potentially after everything is linked. Right. So that kind of looks like a triangle. So mostly because not, not all of these are, are level or completely square. It's it's as good as it needs to be though. Storage facilities and we'll just plop that right on top. Please. Thank you. There we go. We'll link this storage through this processor into the launch pad and this processor into this launch pad and that's our build now because we've done all of this we definitely want to save it so setup cost is 8 million with the upgrade so it was what 6 6.4 so probably about 15 million to build it 8 and 6 and 8.5 plus 6.5, roughly, a little short of 15 million. There we go. That's all our risk spent. So uh, this is going to be a P2 processor that's going to make uh, vaccines. Um, the P3 P3 resource will make vaccines. Um, so what we want to look at is which resources we are going to. going to require on this one right so if we do vaccines we need a livestock and viral agent so why don't we do livestock on this one we will do some livestock right 
So again, to like livestock, if, if you open one of these processors and you want to set the schematic, you go to the schematics tab and press the letter that you want to, you want to create. And let's do our, um, our processing export routes first. Um, so well, what we're going to do is we're going to go, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to go row by row. We'll go one, two, one, two, four, 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 and then five. So it just makes it easy to count. And we're going to divide our, our export routes uh, so that the top top eight processors export into the top storage. Create root. We're going to click on the top storage. Now I wish there was a way you could copy these. You could just say, you know, uh, Control C and then Control V and just click and paste. But nope, you have to do them individually, all one at a time, because CCP. And uh, you know it is what it is. Hopefully they'll change that sometime before you was kill. So L livestock. Oops. Since we set it already, we'll just create a root. Go here. That's four. Oops, wrong one. Livestock. There's. That's two. So now we got four, so we'll go one to four. Livestock. Now this part isn't too bad. It's doing the import routes that are a real pain in the ass. Um, livestock. Okay, so the middle row is the one where we need to divide things up because of the rule of five with this uh, factory design. And the rule of five is one of the constants you have to deal with uh, when you're doing planetary interaction. So as I mentioned, these, these outside uh, two factories can't reach the top storage. Uh, however, these inside two can. And this is where we divide our export routes. So the two inside ones on the inside of the, uh, the center uh, storage need to go to the top storage. And again, to this, this is a, a design being the way that it is so that the routes are, are split between the export storages is to mitigate the possibility of your export storage being overfilled and destroying your process product and that is one of the the main key benefits of this design as well is that it has has enough import storage to sustain itself for two days and process just enough uh, p2 product to fill a p3 processor without overfilling itself as long as you look at it and mean make sure that that top uh, launch pad isn't overfilled within 12 hours of beginning a process run on P2 product. So the inside ones to the top, there. So all, all of these ones all go to this top, top one. Now we're going to do all of the rest. All of the rest of these ones that haven't been set will all go to the top launch pad. Which again too is a reason why you need to check this after 9 to 12 hours. After it begins a P2 processing run. Otherwise, there's a, a let's say, 60-40 chance that this will overfill. And, you know, the longer you let it run when it's overfilled, the worse your results will be. But, you know, you will maybe lose maybe 20% of your product because all of these other processors are uh, being export routed to the top uh, storage. So you might be asking, well, Zart, you can't export a, um, a storage to the customs office. You're right, you cannot. But what you can do is because um, all of these other uh, launch pads will be empty when the processing run is complete, you can uh, expedite transfer uh, your process product from uh, one of these or from this storage to one of the other launch pads. Um, now the one that has 
process product unit as well will already be too full. Um, this, this design also processes more P2 product than will fit in one launch pad. So that's why you have more launch pads. It processes more than any other design with a single uh, storage as, as its center, center core. You know, this, this is the best that PI can get for doing high yield processing because those things were thought of in this design. Um, so, you know, the roots again too from this storage is one, two, three, four, five, six. But anyways, from this one, you can export to this one. I guess storage to storage. For some reason it works. So here we go. Let's do these ones. So livestock. There we go to the top launch pad. Livestock, top launch pad. And two more left. And one left. So that's our export roots are done on this processor design. We're going to save that. Now we have to fill it. And that's the fun part. So for filling it, we have to switch ships because we need um, uh, an Epithel PI ship that can fit. Uh, 50,000 of each type of resource. I need 50,000 biofuels and 50,000 proteins. And we're just going to check Intel chat here real quick. Nothing around here. Okay. Docking request accepted. Let's dock up. We've got two more to do after this, but... Uh, I'll give you the, the general gist of it for doing a high yield uh, P2 processor. Well, I think I'll do a video about the P3 processor last after I've set up another one of these and uh, give it a couple more days for all of this stuff to process and we'll do a P3 which which is really easy. It's the same design you just use um, the two lower launch pads um, and process all of that and export it into the uh, the top two um, the top launch pad and the top storage the segregated design much much the same just you know you're processing um, tier tier three resource instead of a tier two resource so let's get our epithel where's our epithel here we go So I've already put my biofuels and my proteins in here and we're going to undock again. And this is back to uh, an example that is in a lot of ways similar to uh, what I was discussing in my P1 video about filling these, about filling my P2 factories or, or filling and emptying them. Much Done much the same way. Um, we want to, you know, have our inventory up, have the commodities hold on our on our ship available, and then click on the planet that we want, and we're going to access our customs office. Now, after you've built this, the first time you're going to see this 
is the the designation numbers on your launch pads. Now, hopefully they are not all the same or very similar. This one we got lucky. Uh, another P2 processor that I have has a QR and an OR. And the Q and the O are very hard to see. And uh, because you can only do expedited transfers once every like four hours, screwing it up can be a pain in the ass. So fortunately we got lucky with this one. We've got KL and M, right? Even though they're YSA or KPLP, MP or KLM. So there's, there's no mistaking, you know, your alphabet unless you really uh, can't read and you were locked in the mom's basement for way too many years. So what we're going to do is we'll just pick KP, but uh, you know, we, we want to make sure that the first launch pad that we fill will be the one that gets expedited transferred to the, uh, the center launch pad. Uh, and there, there is a consistent way that I do this. This is one of the, the more important choices that you'll make to make this manageable really just sort of a convenience thing right so when I'm when I'm landing this is the first the first launch pad that I am going to use that's the first one that I'm going to fill is going to be MP MP tech Y so MP tech Y also happens to be the bottom one right I'm going to fill this one and then I'll expedite transfer its contents in planet view to the center and then fill it again and I'm going to fill that with biofuels, right? Um, ideally, you know, if you can get away with it, whichever resource uh, in your PI ship happens to be the one that's furthest to the right, or the one that happens to be worth the most, in this case, proteins, like 50,000 biofuels is only worth like 13 million, but 50,000 proteins, that shit's expensive. So you don't want to be sitting at, at a customs office for a very long or, or the least amount of time possible with the expensive resource in your cargo hold. So I'm going to do proteins first, right? So once I land, I'm going to transfer that directly to the customs office. So I'm only sitting there with my ass in the wind with like pennies in my cargo hold instead of 60 million disc in a paper thin chip. So that, that's going to be my first resource is proteins. The center one's going to be proteins. And then the biofuels will be divided up between the other two uh, launch pads. So let's go do that. If uh, it just happens to be that both resources are of equal value, proteins is always very expensive though. So, uh, you know, I'll just do whichever one is in alphabetical order, right? Like if I sort by, by name, usually I do sort by type. But anyways, proteins it is because of the value in this case. You want to unload your most expensive resource to the customs office as soon as you can. So I have my customs office view open. I've got my uh, my launch pad that I want to use on the planet selected that I'm going to export the resource into. And we're going to planet six, which is over here. Oh, it's planet four. So before I land, I'm going to select a planet. Make sure you have your, your brackets turned on. Don't hide your brackets when you're doing PI. It helps to be able to see all the bracket things. I'll keep an eye on the local chat too, just in case some nasty guys come in here. Okay, so there I've landed. I'm half out of warp. I dropped it. And then I'm going to drag that there. Now I know that that's the one I want already right so I have to go into planet view and click on this click on storage expedited transfer transfer that resource and you'll see it move from here to here and there's no other way you can do this unfortunately there so that one that one's full now I want LP We'll fill that with biofuels, right? And the remainder is going to go into KP. 
There, next to the planet view. And let's go back to the port zone. Just, you know, when you're sitting in a customs office, don't keep as much, keep the least amount of resources as you can in your wafer thin ship that's only got like 4,200,000 hit points. Or 4,200, 4,200,000. You can tell I did math. <laughs> So hopefully we'll have this video done soon because we've been going for an hour. These these take quite a long time to set up. For three of them, yeah, it's like, you know, several hours. Do one, take a break. Do another one, take a break. Docking request accepted. So there we're, we're done filling that one. Right. Locals clear. We're docked. Good enough. There. So now, now setting up the resource import routes for the processors. Now this is this is the most tedious part. If this wasn't already tedious, um, what, we, what we typically try to do is to have this launch pad be the first import route for all your processors. It it doesn't always work. That you know having this one first will be the first one that it will use. But, you know, there's certainly a case for arguing that that could be a good thing to do. Um, so, I'm just going to click on the resource that we did for that. Click that. And that. There we go. Because this one's also going to, this is our dual role launch pad. I want this one to empty first if possible. going in rows so that was the top two rows now we go four so that's one two three I, I always have to count because you got to look away to find out where what, what you're clicking on if you can you can do this without looking you're better than that better at this than I am so that's four. We're going to do the center row is four. One. That's two. There's three. And four. Now the second last row is four again. That's one. Two, three, and four. And then the fifth of the row is, last row is five on the bottom. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so after you do that once, submit it. And then what we're gonna do is because we've done this resource, it's it's a handy guide to have these processors uh, indicate that they've got an incoming route because one of the, the outer rings is highlighted, which means one half of its incoming available resources. But uh, we've only done 50% uh, of the available uh, resource for biofuels. Right, because we've got uh, another biofuels resource uh, containers in here. So we have to do uh, biofuels import routes for all of these processors from this one as well. So if we did, uh, just as something to make this a little bit easier to do, if, if we did the biofuels first, and then I went and I switched and I did the proteins after that, um, you know, none of these would be, none of these would, would leave the indicators blank, right? So just sort of a, a process to make it, uh, a guide to make the process a little bit easier to recall what stage you're at. 
if you get distracted or something, you got to walk away. Coming back to this and figuring out where you left off can be a bit of a pain in the ass. So, you know, doing one, one resource type each first is, is certainly easier. So that when you start on the last resource, like I, I, next after this one, I'm going to go to proteins and I'm going to do all of them. Then I finish that and I know that I've only got one of the storages left that's got proteins in it. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. So biofuels, I'm going to go back over all of these again from the bottom right launch pad with biofuels. One, two. So you can see if I click on this processor, the routes that are incoming, it's got two incoming routes for, for livestock or for biofuels and outgoing is livestock. And that's, that's what it should have. It'll total each one of these processors needs four incoming routes. Uh, four because, you know, there's four storages that have incoming material and one output. So bottom right again. So we did two. We'll go one. And this is why making, this is why counting the rows helps because once you've gone over it once, there's no visual indicators to tell you where you were. That's one, two, three, four. Standard row will do four. One. Two. three and four okay second last row is four again so there's one two three four bottom row five one, two, three, four, and five. There. So that's biofuels is done. So every one of these processors, like two, four, eight, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, there's 21. All 21 of these should have two incoming routes for just biofuels. So now, uh, again, too, like when, when you're using these, if you want to fill it again before it's finished, if that's something you can do, which you could do, um, the, uh, the resource that you want to have emptied, um, or the storage that you would want to have emptied first would be the center one because you can't do exports uh, to fill this directly, right? So best case scenario, if if that was something that always worked, we'll do a route for this one first, uh, for this one for proteins to all of these uh, 21 processors. If you like the number 21, you do, well, we'll do fantastic at this. If 21 was a bad year for you, well, you, uh, you'll you have some therapy trying to set one of these up. So, proteins, and you'll see here how the guide disappears. There, so now it's lit up with both sides. So we're doing the center storage to all the processors, and we're on the first row. Second row, third row, this can be kind of hard to see the third row when you're doing this. There's two, there's three, that's four. Fourth row. Let's 
two, three, four, that's two. That's four. And last row has five. There we go. So now it started processing. That's that's our first run is going, but we still have uh, one launch pad left to make routes for, and uh, we should see that like all of them are all lit up. They both have both both resources are uh, are being provided. We're making making some cow. We're gonna have some steaks, and. Uh, you know, but we still have to do 21 more, do this 21 more times, 21 times four. It, it is, tell us 21 times four. You have to do that 84 times setting up your, your export routes, 84 and then 21 for your 80 or 84 for your import routes and 21 for your export routes. But, you know, when you're doing this, who cares about math? You don't want to focus on the math part of it. So, again, too, we're going to go from the top to the bottom because, you know, consistency is just makes it easy to remember where you were at. So, one. That's two, first row, second row. Third row, it's going to double check this one. It should have two of each for two, two of each incoming type. So this one, I, I uh, oh, it's got, yeah, and see, in only only incoming. You'll see some transiting. There'll be lots of transiting product in this uh, factory design. So I'm just going to make sure that I didn't uh, goof one up and not click on it. So we've got four incoming routes, two for each type. Four incoming and one outgoing. And this one doesn't transit anything because it's on the edge. And this one... This one only has one proteins, and that only has one protein, so we're on center row. Correct? Center row. One. Two. Three. Four. Second last row. One, two, three, four. And last row has five. So one, two, three. four and five. I'm going to double check this one on the outside. It has two and that is done. And that is how you set up a high yield P2 processor or tier two product processor for uh, planetary interaction. Um, I'm going to build another one of these, but I'm going to do it on screen and uh, or on, on this video.
and the other one will be for vaccines. I think it was vaccines, right? So livestock, livestock is used for, for making vaccines. So the other one will do viral agent. I'll be doing one to, to make viral agent. And then I'll come back for the, uh, the video where I do the P3 processing. So there will be a part four for this. Uh, and then I'll, in part four, I will review how the progress this is going. And I'm going to have to check on this again in about eight to 12 hours. So it's um, almost 10.40 p.m. my time, which is kind of a bad time for me to do this because I don't like to get up in the morning. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to check on this uh, probably later this evening and ensure that um, this launch pad is empty. And this one, or pardon me, rather that this one is emptying and, you know, it's quite possible that they will, they'll empty in tandem and, you know, free up some extra space in this, you know, and again, too, like, uh, it's, it's, it's crucial that you use a launch pad for your export storages so that, you know, you, you can manage, um, overfills easily by just exporting to your customs office. If you can't actually get to this or can't manage it for some whatever reason it happens to be yeah uh, and this will process uh 6250 units of livestock and it'll do that in two days so there you go that uh is this concludes the p2 processor uh, set up design and concepts for the Planetary Interaction Masterclass. Cheers!